Well, good morning and welcome to our Sunday School time uh, on this day, February the 6th. We're just glad to have each one of you with us today. We've been studying on how to avoid life's pitfalls. And today our lesson is the pitfall of injustice. As you know, uh, last week we had studied about Joseph and how Joseph had been thrown into the uh, prison again because of uh, advances that Potiphar's wife made upon him and accusations that she made. And uh, he found finds himself now in prison once again. And so that's where our lesson will take up today. A lot of times in our lives, I think we sometimes think that we uh, fall into the pitfall of injustice. Maybe we plan a beautiful vacation and, and uh, when we get to wherever we're going, it doesn't work out the way we planned it. And we just think, well, you know, it just fell apart. Uh, those are, that's not an important thing in life. It's important at the time, but the, the things that matter in our lives, um, are the things that will, will last for eternity. And so, uh, Joseph fell into the pitfall of injustice and we need to see how he reacted because he was unjustly or unjustly thrown into prison because of accusations that a woman made about him that was not true. So let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer, and I pray that each one of you are doing well today. I'm just so happy of this time we have together, and I want to pray for you, and I want to pray for God's guidance in our lesson today, and then we'll begin there in Genesis uh, chapter 39. Let's go to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, I do thank you today, Father, for this time we have together. I thank you for those who are listening. Father, uh, those who are watching, uh, I just pray your blessings on them today. Lord, I pray for each and every one of them. Lord, if they're at home sick, or maybe, Father, the weather may be too bad for them to get out, or, Father, they're, <clears throat> they're at home because of uh, fear of COVID, Lord, I just pray that you would bless each one of them. Uh, Lord, whatever the reason they are, whatever the reason they're at home, I uh, just pray that you would bless them and help them through that situation. Father, if there's those joining today that are uh, just not in a church, I, Lord, I pray today would be the day that they would uh, listen to a, a broadcast and that they would have a desire to be worship in your house, Lord, for that's what your word tells us to do. Uh, your Lord, Lord, your word calls us to gather together as Christians, Father, and it's just like uh, uh, we, when we come together, Father, we learn more about you, and Father, we learn, uh, we learn from each other as well. And I'm so grateful for our church. I'm grateful for Pastor Mike and Joey and Abigail as they lead, and I pray your blessings on them. Pray that you be with Pastor Mike as he, he preaches this morning. As he brings a message in our worship service. I just pray that you be with him. And blessing all that's done, I pray for each and every teacher, Lord. You have blessed us so much with good teachers in our church. And I just lift them up to you and pray for them today. Lord, bless each one again at home. Bless those who are listening. And Lord, most of all, I want to glorify your name today in what's said and done. So, Lord, we give you praise and glory, uh, and, Lord, we uh, we just claim your promise that your word does not return void, and uh, we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Well, as I said, the title of our lesson is The Pitfall of Injustice, and uh, a lot of us have been through what we would think are unjust things in our life. <clears throat> the Bible tells us in John 16, verse 33, that in the world you shall have tribulation. It says, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So when we have uh, some hard times, when we have tribulations, when we have uh, what we feel is uh, unjust uh, unjust things happen to us, we, ha we don't have to fear because the Lord has overcome the world. And that is such a great uh, message to, to me and to my life as I was studying this lesson uh, this week. Um, Genesis 39, 21 through 23 says, But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him, him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prisons. And the keeper of the prisons committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, was he, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it prosper. Uh, Again, we see the Lord being with Joseph uh, in times of difficulty. Uh, the Bible says there in verse 21 that the Lord was with Joseph and the Lord showed him mercy 
and he gave him favor in the sight of the innkeeper. Uh, we, we have that promise from the Lord that he, is, he will never leave us nor forsake us. Just as the, the Lord was with Joseph, the Lord is with us. Even in our hard times and bad times, the times that we don't see any way out, the Lord is with us. Um, we don't have to endure injustice. We don't have to endure the hard times alone because God is there for us. And God has said that he would be with us. Uh, the Lord showed mercy to Joseph. Uh, one of the translations, instead of using the word mercy, used his the word steadfast love, those two words, uh, instead of the, uh, the, the word mercy. So God, the Lord, showed steadfast love to Joseph, even in this time of injustice. Um, the Lord enabled Joseph to continue uh, to be the godly person that he was in spite of his circumstance. The Lord allowed him to continue uh, to be godly. You know, and that's a choice that we make. But the Lord will allow us and he will provide us uh, strength and he will provide everything we need to remain godly. Uh, so Joseph remained godly there even in, in, uh, in prison, uh, being thrown in unjustly. His character was not compromised. He did not become mean and he did not become uh, upset and irrational, but he, he uh, remained who he was. He remained in the character of God uh, whom had whom had blessed his life and who continued to bless his life. And he remained faithful and he remained loyal to God. Uh, no matter what happened to him, he maintained the integrity that he had. Uh, he was a good person and he, he shows us an example of how we should react in those times of, of injustice in our own lives. We maintain that character of, of being a Christian. We maintain our loyalty to God and and we maintain our our integrity <clears throat> so that uh, we don't become uh mean and <coughs> excuse me hateful but we uh when instead we we uh please god in, in everything that we do and it goes on and it says uh, and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison not only did god give joseph the strength to maintain his integrity and his character but he also opened the eyes of the prison keeper. Uh, the prison keeper observed Joseph's character. The, he, the warden saw that uh, Joseph displayed an integrity in his work ethic. He did everything that was asked of him. He, and the worker found favor in his sight. Um, he, saw, he saw Joseph's high moral standards, and, and, and he knew that Joseph's standards guided him in everything that he did and everything that he said. And the warden looked upon Joseph and saw that he was one who could be trusted. And he says there in the Bible that he looked on him with favor. Then in verse 22, it says, And the keeper of the prison put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners who were in prison. Whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. The keeper of the prison again saw this character in Joseph that he could be trusted. He saw this uh, characteristic of Joseph's life that, that would benefit him. He is the keeper, and it would benefit the prison as well. And so he put him in charge of all the, all the prisoners. He saw the gifts of Joseph. He saw Joseph was an administrator. Joseph had managed everything that had belonged to Potiphar, and he had proved himself to be an administrator. He saw him as a manager. The, he, he would be capable of managing the, all the prisoners, and, uh, and the prison guard could see those characteristics in Joseph, and he saw him as being trustworthy because he fulfilled all the duties and responsibilities that were given to him. Joseph wasn't successful because he focused on responsibilities that were given to him. He was, he, was, he was successful because his focus was on God. His focus was on God, his creator, the one through whom all power comes. He didn't dwell on injustice that was given to him, uh, but he was responsible. And whatever was done there, he was the one that did it. He, Joseph was the one that re, was responsible for it. And the, the keeper benefited from that. Then we see in Genesis 29, verse 23, it said, The keeper of prison paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's charge because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made it succeed. The warden benefited from his decision to make, give Joseph to, to make him in charge of managing the prisoners and make, making things, sure that things took place. 
Joseph had proven himself. Um, again, he had proven himself in Potter's household, and in Potiphar's household. And while serving in Potiphar's household, he handled all of Potiphar's household business. If you remember, the only decision that Potiphar had to make was what he wanted to eat. Uh, Joseph made all the other decisions. By entrusting Joseph with the authority to manage the prison, the warden had nothing to worry about. There were no worries about what was happening in the prison, that there was going to be a prison break, that he had nothing to worry about. Managing this prison was not an easy task, though. It was a huge responsibility. And once again, Joseph exhibited his great management skills that had been given to him from the Lord, and he was able to successfully carry out the responsibility that was placed on his shoulders. And Joseph had proved himself over and over how capable he was. But when, when he was successful, it was because of his faith in God, not in, in his own powers. Oftentimes when we're successful, um, we tend to think that we're invincible. But the fact is, is just like Joseph, it's not us, it's the Lord that is with us. It's the Lord that who's strengthening us and, and the Lord who, who uh, makes us able to complete our task and able to be successful in our positions. It's the Lord that does that for us. The scripture here says, because the Lord was with him. That's why he was successful. Whatever he did, the Lord made it succeed. Uh, God had blessed Joseph with gifts and skills, but at the same time, the Lord uh, knew that Joseph depended on him and so the Lord um, made it succeed because the Lord was with him. Uh, the Lord gave him the, the wisdom to make the right decisions. The Lord led him in the things that he decided to do. And just like the, the Lord has blessed us, each one of us have a gift. Each one of us has been given a spiritual gift. Each one of us have been given the access to the Word of God. Each one of us have been given access to, to a, a great preacher, a pastor, each one of us have been given access to hear the Word of God taught. And the Word of God and God Himself is the one that can make us successful. We've got all that going for us, but sometimes we make the wrong decisions. Uh, but we didn't see that in Joseph's life. Joseph made the right decisions. Uh, under normal circumstances, Joseph would have been executed for being accused of attempting to rape Potiphar's wife. But the Lord intended for Joseph to live, and the Lord and continued to use Joseph, and he continued for, for the, him to live to carry out the will of the Lord. And we'll see that as we study more about Joseph. Um, while Joseph was there in prison for a crime that he did not commit, injustice, injustice was served on him, but the Lord continued to prepare him for a greater task the Lord began to compare him for what he had for him in the future. And a lot of times as we go through these things in our life that we don't understand, the Lord may be strengthening us and preparing us for a time uh, that we will face in the future. So the Lord uh, is in control and the Lord knows our lives and he knows what we need and he knows our future if we will just trust him and, and uh, abide in his presence and, and, and call on his name. Joseph did not let the circumstances determine his future. He allowed the Lord and his relationship with the Lord to determine his future. And, you know, it's easy to let our circumstances get us down uh, when we lose a loss, a loved one, uh, when tragedy strikes us. Maybe someone uh, gets hurt real bad, or maybe someone gets sick, or maybe something happens and, and we lose our job. Uh, it's easy to let those circumstances get us down. But we need to commit to serving the Lord no matter what our circumstances. Uh, Joseph could have easily given up and said, Lord, I don't know why I'm in prison, but but if this is what it is about serving you, I don't want any more of it. He could have, he could have easily said that. But Joseph's strength and Joseph's trust was not in his own self, but his trust and his strength came from the Lord. So he, the Lord will do the same for us. We can trust him and if we believe him. We must commit to trusting him in all situations. Um, and, and when we do that, we'll find that our faith and our character will grow and we will become stronger and we'll, we'll be able to handle different situations. We must always choose to trust him because the way of faith is the only way. And we know the way of faith is the only way that we can get into heaven as well. In verses, in chapter 40, verses 1 through 4, it says, And it came to pass after these things that the butler of Egypt and his baker had offended the Lord King of Egypt. 
And Pharaoh wrought against the two of his officers and against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in the ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. What we see here is that uh, two of the, two of the uh, head, of, head of his staff, uh, head of Potiphar's staff had done something wrong. Uh, and so they were thrown into prison. The, the captain of the guard had appointed, then appointed Joseph to be in charge of them. Uh, and um, they, they continued there sometime in custody. Verse, 40, verse 4 says that the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season in ward. Even when injustice was done to Joseph, we can now look at his life and see that he shows us a different approach. He was given the responsibility now of taking on two new prisoners that had been on Potiphar's staff, had been part of his team. And um, instead of being mad and, and resentful because of his situation, he followed the directions of the prison guard, the one that was over him. <clears throat> him. He followed the orders and he attended to, to these two new prisoners. The captain of the bar guard brought uh, these two new prisoners in jail and he appointed Joseph to be in charge of them. He assigned them to Joseph. He gave Joseph responsibility for them. So Joseph's uh, job grew even more than just watching over the normal prisoners. Now, now he was watching over these two uh, high visual uh, prisoners. They were former staff members or former servants, head servants of Potiphar, and they served him. They, uh, one was the chief butler and one was the chief baker. So they were thrown into prison because something they had done to Potiphar. Joseph served them as he was told to do by the captain. The captain apparently knew uh, that, that Joseph uh, could be trusted to attend to him or he wouldn't have asked him to do that. They were thrown in prison, as I said earlier, because of something they had done against Pharaoh. Uh, some crime against Pharaoh had caught them in prison. And the verse says here they continued in season, can, continued a season in ward. That means that they stayed there for some time period. And in verse five it says they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night, and each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in prison. Now dreams were often used by God to reveal uh, to. to people his plans to prophets and and to others he revealed his plans um either either for them or how he was going to do what he was going to do in the world both of these men the chief butler and the chief baker worked very closely with pharaoh uh, the chief butler was the one who was the cupbearer he would bring the uh the the cup to pharaoh and before he would give it to pharaoh he would make sure it was not poisoned in any way so he was very trusted by Pharaoh. He's very important to Pharaoh. The chief baker made sure that he was in charge of the food for the for Pharaoh. So he made sure that the food was not poisoned and that that it would have a good taste and it would be something that that Pharaoh would like. So both of them uh, had earned the trust of the king Pharaoh, and both of them had become uh, the king's confidants. And uh, so it was one of these things that something they had done uh, had broken that trust with Pharaoh and he had them thrown in prison. Uh, one night, they both had the dreams. Uh, the next morning, they were comparing their dreams and that's when each dream, they found each dream was different and each dream had its own meaning. And, and they were bound in prison and they wondered what the prison, what the dream was and how they could find out to have the dream interpreted because uh, they could not go to the king's and, or Pharaoh's interpreters, but here they were in prison. And then in verse 6, we see in verse, chapter 40, verse 6, um, it says, and, and Joseph came unto them in the morning and looked, and behold, they were sad. Joseph saw that they were sad or troubled. Uh, Joseph had been given responsibility for them, and I, he, he probably wondered what had made them try, sad, what had troubled them. So that morning, he, he saw that they were troubled. It's not unusual that he noticed they were troubled, but what happens in the following verse shows us that he was concerned for them because this is quite unusual because we tend to worry about our own problems and we don't worry about others' problems. Uh, how many times have we gone to work or, or gone to do something and we, we're burdened with our own problems and somebody else comes up with a problem and we're like, 
I got my own problems. I don't need to hear yours. Well, Joseph wasn't that way. Joseph was concerned. Verse 7 says he asked favor of his office that, that officers that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore you look so sadly to the day? Um, they were sad because there was no one there to interpret the dreams they had. And this caused them to be downcast more and more each day because they didn't know what these dreams meant. Um, the interpretation of dreams was very important to people in those days. Uh, people considered dreams as a way that, that deity would speak to them and that de deity would communicate with them. So when the, they had these dreams and then they couldn't be interpreted, they become more downcast every day because they didn't know what the dreams meant. They fretted over their dreams. They became sad. And uh, some translations say they were, li they were distressing and had become disagreeable. But in e either case, it was obvious to Joseph that something was wrong with them. And then in verse 8, we see their reply to Joseph. They said, we, they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto him, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. When, when asked what they were troubled about, they replied that, that they had to dream the dream and there was no one to interpret it, um, that they had, uh, they had become uh, downcast, as I had said earlier. But when Joseph approached them and they, that, and they told Joseph the dreams, um, this showed that they must have developed a relationship with Joseph because the dreams um, were, were very personal and normally only told or only shared with interpreters or close family and friend. But Joseph immediately responded with a question when they said they'd had a dream. Joseph said, do not interpretations belong to God? Uh, Joseph's response reported them to God and not to Joseph. Joseph didn't say, hey, I can tell you what that means. Joseph didn't say, hey, I, I have the power to interpret dreams. But what Joseph said is that then does not the interpretation of dreams belong to God. It didn't belong to Joseph. Only God himself could interpret the dreams. So Joseph believed that only God could, could, could interpret the dreams, and, and this showed his deep faith in God. It showed that, that he had seen dreams become reality and that he knew that God could provide the answers to their dreams. So Joseph said, Tell me them, I pray you. Now these verses are not covered in our lesson, but I want to read these next verses just so we fill in the gap of what happens between verses here. So I'm going to read Genesis 40, 9 through 19. It said, And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said unto him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it budded, and her blossom shot forth, and the clust clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup. And I gave the cup to Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of this dream, that the three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place, and thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup to his hand after the former manner which thou was his butler. But think on me when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee unto me. And make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house, out of this prison. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and here I have done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. And when the chief baker saw that interpretation was good, he said unto Joseph, I, was, I also was in my dream, and behold, I had three white baskets on my head. And in the uppermost basket was all the manner of baked meats for Pharaoh, and the birds that eat them out of the basket on my head. And Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation thereof, that the three baskets are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up his head from off thee, and shall hang thee on a tree, and the birds shall eat and fly, eat thy flesh from off of thee. Wow. These two servants had two entirely different dreams and they had two entirely different outcomes you see one was going to be restored the other one's going to be um, killed and and the birds would eat his flesh but joseph translated those dreams to them so you know they became uh, one became happy and one probably became nervous about what was going to take place 
So we pick back up here in Genesis 40, 20 through 23. And I'll read uh, verse 20 first. And, and uh, we need to remember that we, we don't get discouraged in things uh, because God has our, has our plan already laid out for us and we can trust him. And that's what Joseph did. Joseph said, and I mean, it says here, and it came to pass the third day, which would happen to be Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of chief baker among his servants. Joseph had uh, said that three days, in three days, they would, they would be, their head would be lifted up by Pharaoh. Um, and this was also, as I said, Pharaoh's birthday, as the scripture says. So Pharaoh made a feast for all his servants. He called all his servants to give. Basically, what he did is he gave himself a birthday party. He called together all the servants, even the baker and the butler who had been in prison. Uh, they were called together. Scripture says that the heads of the baker and the butler were lifted up. This basically means, what this means here is that they were recognized in front or above all the other servants before the crowd. It was a way of special recognition. So they 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 were recognized uh, before the rest of the, the people. And it said in verse 21, and he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again, and he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. I'm sure both guys and both of these, the baker and the butler were remembering the dreams and they remembered the interpretation that uh, Joseph had given and what was going to happen. And we see here the butler uh, was restored to his position just as Joseph had said he would be. And he immediately resumed his responsibility by giving the cup to Pharaoh and making sure that it was not poison. And then in verse 22, he said, but he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. Unfortunately, the baker, for him, there was no restoration. Joseph's dream, Joseph's interpretation of the dream came true uh, and he was hanged. Some biblical scholars believe he was hung from a rope and some on a tree. Some believe that he was, uh, that a spear or some object was thrust through him and, and against, up against a tree and he was hung on a tree by a spear or, or some other uh, instrument of death that, that, and they left his body there to be eaten by the birds. Whether it was hanged by a noose or with a spear, doesn't matter. The end result was the same. He was punished and he was killed by Pharaoh. But what happened to Joseph? Remember, he interpreted dreams that the butler had promised to him. And, and remember, the butler had made a, a promise that he would uh, remember. Joseph said, if you were just remember me when, when you return to the, to the king, uh, the butler had promised to remember him. But did he remember him? In verse 23, we said, Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but he forgot him. We see in these verses that Joseph was forgotten by the butler. The butler did not keep his promise, the, his part of the bargain. Joseph could have been distraught. Uh, Joseph could have been mad. But, and I'm sure there was some disappointment in his heart. But Joseph did not let this keep him from serving. Joseph continued to serve there in prison. And there's a good lesson for us to learn here a lesson that we can apply to our life. Sometimes we think life is not fair. Uh, people don't do what they say they will do. Uh, we we help others and, and they don't seem to return that help to us. And maybe we, we find ourselves asking why and saying we'll never help them again. Uh, maybe, maybe we lose our faith in mankind and maybe we, we can quit trusting God. Um, God has a plan for us. And Joseph knew that God had a plan for him. And God, Joseph knew that God would implement his plan in God's time. And that's what we have to realize in our life. Uh, God has a plan for us. And God has a plan for those that are around us in our lives. And God will implement his plan for us if we would just be faithful to him. If we quit, nothing gets accomplished. We are able to continue in, in, in the place that God has put us. And in the time that God has us in, we should be serving him. If it's in prison, then we need to do our best. If it's in a place of recognition, we need to do our best. Whatever position or place that God has put us, 
That is what we need. That's what we need to excel. That's what we need to, to uh, trust God even more and show the world that we trust God and who he is and how uh, we even respond even in difficult times. And it's only through Christ that we can do this. Only through the power of God that strengthens us can we do anything. Uh, I pray that uh, this lesson has been helpful for you today. I pray that um, if you're going through a difficult time, I pray that it's been uh, maybe encouraging you to, to just hold on, just wait. God has his time and, and trust him. If you're not trusting him, uh, then then you need to. You need to turn to him. You need to lay it all at his feet and allow God to have his way and allow God's timing in your life. And and God will God has said he would never leave us nor forsake us. And and he will give us what's best and he will do what's best in our life if we'll just trust him. I pray that you have a great week. I pray that uh you just uh stay safe. And I pray that you stay healthy, and uh, I'll talk to you again next Sunday. God bless you, and I love each one of you. I really mean that when I say it. I love each one of you. Thank you so much. I can't go, I can't